Irritable bowel syndrome is a very common disorder and probably accounts for about 25% of our practice. Patients with that disorder will um, commonly have abdominal pain that's chronic in nature and altered bowel habits, and that could include diarrhea, constipation, or alternating diarrhea and constipation. When we see a patient with that, we can oftentimes tell just by taking a history uh, as to the, do they have that disease or not. However, we also look for what we call alarm symptoms, such as somebody that has some bleeding or bloody diarrhea. That would make us think about something else going on, such as ulcerative colitis. Ulcerative colitis is uh, an inflammatory bowel disease. Uh, these people commonly present with bloody diarrhea, uh, weight loss. Um, we commonly would see it, let's say, in younger people, maybe starting in teenage years up to the mid-20s, but it can be seen pretty much at, at any age. Well, we see a, a, quite a bit of Crohn's disease here. Uh, that's a disease that can involve anywhere involving the GI tract, which would include stomach, uh, small bowel, and colon. One of the most common presentations is that patients come in with diarrhea, abdominal pain, uh, maybe a fever, and uh, sometimes they can have bloody diarrhea as well. The difference between ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease is that we can actually cure ulcerative colitis um, by taking out the colon. That would be the ultimate cure. We would not want to do that unless we had to. As far as diverticulosis is concerned, it's very common. That's where we, patients develop pockets or pouches in the colon. Uh, you can also see diverticulosis actually in the small intestine as well. And I've seen a couple actually in the esophagus. I see people get diverticulosis and diverticulitis confused. Diverticulitis means that the pockets of the diverticula have become infected or inflamed. Typically this will resolve. However, patients may get recurrent episodes of diverticulitis. And if that occurs, they could get some scarring and narrowing of the colon, and that may uh, necessitate surgical intervention. Barrett's esophagus is a, a condition in which the lining of the esophagus changes over time due to repeated episodes of acid reflux. And it changes to a lining you'd normally see in the intestine, and that does increase your risk to have esophageal cancer over your lifetime. Celiac disease is actually something that we're seeing more and more of. Um, I think it's because we're looking for it. It's, it's very much underdiagnosed. Patients may, with celiac disease may have iron deficiency anemia, diarrhea, weight loss, and many other symptoms that are what we call nonspecific. They don't necessarily say, you have iron deficiency anemia, you have celiac disease. Lactose intolerance is something uh, that many people have. They could have a sensitivity to milk or dairy products. Uh, if they have the sensitivity, they may have diarrhea problems, maybe a gas and bloating uh, that they develop after um, consuming those things. We deal with more. Some patients will have right upper abdominal pain. So the question is, is whether or not they have gallbladder disease or not. Dr. Fain and I are very willing and able to help with any sort of digestive issue that you may have. There's no need to be embarrassed. We are trained to deal with a lot of different issues involving the GI tract. And we're here to help. <laughs>